Hi, I'm Greg Garcia and bringing another video out uh, from Angler's All here in Littleton, Colorado. Today we're going to be tying the Holy Grail, great little pattern that uh, we've done very well with fishing um, all year long, great caddis pattern. So I'll just uh, get to tying and if you like the videos please check out our other videos on uh, Vimeo and then also on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm using a uh, Tamco 2488 hook. You can also tie this on an 87, a 57, uh, Daiki, Daiichi, it doesn't really matter. I do like the straight, straight eye version of this fly. I'm going to be tying a size 12, but probably the most fishable sizes are going to be in that uh, 14 to 16 inch range. And I've got a 764 tungsten bead on this. Uh, again, you could use a brass bead if you'd like. Either one will work. <clears throat> what I do like about the straight eye is it gives me a little bit more of a hook little bit bigger gape and I think if you do elect to swing this fly especially at the end of the drift um, I think a straight eye or a little slight up eye tracks a little better in the water so that's why I'm gonna go with this one all right so starting off we need to make sure that we're gonna be putting a couple of materials in front of this eye or in front of the beads. So I kind of visually make sure I have about a width of an eye, maybe just a little bit more in front of the bead. So I'm going to start my thread right on that plane. I'm going to go back about five wraps. Then I can cut off my tag. And then I'm going to get a piece of flashaboo. This is going to be our ribbing, but it's also, I'm using a little technique that uh, I saw Tim Flagger do in one of his videos on uh, how to position this bead so we're not guessing each time and then also um, at the end of the fly we end up not having enough room up there. So what we do is we'll attach a piece of flashaboo right in the spot where I uh, tied in my thread. I'm going to fold it forward and tie it in. And then I'm going to slip this bead right up to that point. And then I'm going to bring my flashaboo over the top of the bead, underneath the hook, and then straight back. That's going to be just a little invisible anchor point so then to keep that bead in position time after time. So if you're tying a dozen of these, every fly should look the same. So then I'm just going to bring my dubbing all the way back, or I should say my thread all the way back down the hook shank to where if my thread is uh, leaning back at about a 45 degree angle, that, that's about my stopping point right there. Then I'm going to just come right back up <clears throat> and then I can start applying some dubbing. The dubbing for this fly is Rabbit and as you know from if you're looking at previous videos, I always kind of prep my, my dubbing where I'll pull and stack kind of get everything going in the right direction and uh, it's just going to be a little bit easier to get this dubbing on the thread. <clears throat> I'm going to make about a six inch long little noodle here. I find if you kind of start with the tip of your dubbing as you first press it on and then you can kind of gently get that to where it's parallel to your thread and then at that point 
you can spin it right onto the thread. Kind of makes dubbing hassle free. And I know dubbing for a lot of us can be uh, a little bit of a nuisance until you get used to it. You know, thin little noodle is, I think, best. I can make uh, tight little bodies. And I think they uh, just tie better. So as you notice here, I got about a half an inch of uh, working thread. I'm going to bring that back down to where I put in my, tied in my flashaboo. And then with the thinnest piece of my dubbing, I can start my taper upwards. We're going to lay in one even coat, so to speak, right in front of the point of the tip. So I bring it, draw it straight down, and then I'm going to go back slightly, three, four wraps. Maybe I'll come forward, three, four wraps, and so now that is uh, bigger diameter than the rest of the fly and then I can just kind of fill in any little holes and get that nice little taper in there. Dubbing to use, you can use natural hair's ear. This has a little bit of Antron in it. Um, you could use ice stubbing, choose anything you really want to. Um, we sell this fly from Fulling Mills in both uh, olives and all in, in, the, in the tan hairs here. And uh, the tan is probably the most popular. And now I'm just going to start my ribbing. Oops. Give myself about four or five wraps. Give this body a little bit of flash. Tie that in. I'm going to bring it forward. And I'm just going to wrap back onto it to make it a little bit more durable. And then I can uh, snip that off. Now we need to put in a little wing case. You can use uh, pheasant tail fibers. You probably have to use about 12, 14 pieces. Um, I like using turkey tail. And I think it covers this piece much, uh, much quicker. And uh, I don't burn through pheasant tails as quite as quick. So if you're uh, stripping off 12, 14 of those every time, your turkey tail will be gone in no time. This little slip, I'm going to um, even it up. And then I'm going to just lay this right on top of the hook. And I got the uh, dull side facing me. So the shiny side will be down against the hook. And then with my thread wraps, I'm going to come up just slightly onto the body. There we go. And then I'm going to uh, add in a little bit more dubbing for the thorax of the fly. You can give you a little heavier with your dubbing needle on this. I have to add a little bit more, but let's go with that. And I'm just going to wind backwards onto my wing case. And then at this point, this little piece up here, spin that on a little tighter. There we go. That looks a lot better. So now with my thread, what I'm going to do is right on top of the bead, 
take it right to the front of the bead and then I'm going to bring my thread forward just kind of paint that hook a little bit and now I can bring my wing case straight over make a couple wraps those are light wraps not real heavy I'm just letting the weight of my bobbin kind of compress this feather a little bit before I tighten it up and then I'm going to go in and snip this as close to the bead as I can and I'm just going to clean in this, clean up this tying point a little bit. Okay. And now we're ready for our soft hackle, which is partridge. I highly suggest getting a full skin. You're going to have a whole lot of waste, less waste, and then you sure have a large variety of different feathers that you can get. I like using the feathers right at the um, shoulder of the wing. Most of the time they're a little bit, have a little bit more gray speckle in them than uh, brown. And I'm going to start off with this uh, one feather and I'm going to prep it a little bit. So I don't need any of this fluff. So what I'm going to do is strip that off right off the bat and then I'm going to be tying this feather in by the tip and um, and then there's going to be some feathers back here that I don't really need and I'm going to strip those off as well but what I would like to just kind of point out is look at the natural curvature of this feather so when we wrap this we want to wrap this on that natural curve of the feather. That way, if we do it right, all the partridge will be facing backwards and just making a nice soft hackle appearance to this fly versus having hackle going just everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to prep this a little bit further. I'm gonna grab the stem and then what I do is I just kind of stroke those feathers back and determine, and I think I like these little barring effect on those. So I'm going to tie this in right at that point. I'm going to get maybe three wraps of this feather. So I'm going to take this further and then I'm going to strip off the barbs off the back that I don't think I'm going to need. So I'm going to lay this straight in on my side of the hook, right where that crease is. I'm going to wrap three wraps, grab this tip, fold it back, three wraps backwards, and I'm just going to bring my thread right up to the front, and then I'm going to cut that little tip out. By folding it back, that just makes it a little bit more durable. And um, also in the next step of wrapping this, it uh, gives a little bit more support so I don't pull it out. Little plunger style hackle pliers. These are from uh, Stonefro in the micro size. I like these a lot for my soft hackles. I'm just going to grab that stem, pull it to where it's uh, standing straight up. Wet your fingers stroke these fibers backwards so they're folded behind the stem and then I'm going to take that first wrap and controlling this plier if I twist it you can see how feathers barb barbules will want to go forward but if I keep this in the same plane I can keep everything shooting straight back Okay, there's my second wrap that broke off so just kind of reattach that and then right there I'm at the end of my last wrap on bare stem at this point make two three good wraps and then tighten it 
and take my pliers off. And then if I want to make uh, this even a little bit more durable, I can fold this back. And then I'm going to start my thread. And that uh, stem is a little stiff, but once your thread starts to bite into it, it'll go right into place. And then all I have to do is whip finish this. Should do it. Make sure this is tight. Cut it closer to the thread if you can. And then I'm going to pull this stem forward and then I can cut that stem out. Just bring your tips right down to the stem, snip, and then we're going to put on a little head cement. Just make this a little bit more durable. I like putting it on a botkin. This is the uh, hardest hull penetrator. I really like the cement in that if I do two or three coats, make a really nice little flossy head. And that's it. And that's the Holy Grail. Great fly. Fish is great for caddis. Um, as you can see, it's got going to have a lot of movement in it with that partridge. Partridge is all laying backwards. And uh, you can nymph this fly deep. You can uh, tie it behind another dry or a big dry fly. Or you can just swing this fly too if you're uh, wanting to fish it on the swing. Uh, we've had a lot of good luck with this fly this, even in this winter on uh, some of the warmer days. It's, it's a producer. So give it a try. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see everybody next time. You could just go ahead and say uh, one more. Like if you're, if you're looking for the materials list, uh, it's towards the beginning of this video. And uh, keep in mind this will be going. Uh, thanks for joining us on Fly Time Fridays. And that mm. will kind of resonates in people's brains and then a lot of them tune in on Friday, last Friday of the month. So Okay. Um, if you just say uh Yeah. Mm. Um Okay. Just go ahead and do your thanks for watching Fly Time mm. Fridays. If you're looking for the materials list it's towards the beginning of this video, something like that. Thanks for watching Fly Time Fridays. And if you're looking to for the material list, uh, we have it right at the very start of the, the video. Thanks again.